right, close. As far as we know, just wanted for excessive speed. We're in the Canyon Country area on Soledad Canyon Road, headed towards the 14. Been going on for about 30, maybe 40 minutes. Speeds up to 120 miles an hour on the freeway. Boy, an extremely dangerous pursuit, especially for the motorcyclists. We've seen uh, a couple of close calls, and we've seen acceleration uh, in between vehicles, around cars, onto the shoulder. Uh, CHP is overhead with a helicopter, but there are no patrol cars behind the motorcycle because they just can't travel at this rate of speed. It is uh, much too dangerous for them to try and do that. So at this point in time, they're just hoping to get this individual to maybe slow down and uh, to uh, stop driving excess, uh, an excessive rate and in such a dangerous manner. We uh, see the CHP helicopter overhead. They've lost the individual several times. And you can see, even for us from time to time, it's hard to keep, for us to keep them in frame because he accelerates so quickly and makes turns onto other surface streets so quickly that it's hard to keep them in sight. So right now, CHP is just trying to coordinate, trying to get more units uh, in an area where they could try and get this to uh, come to a peaceful end. And that right now, it's unclear if the motorcyclist even knows the patrol cars or the helicopter is overhead. This is the first stoplight I've seen him actually stop at, but there you can see stop for a moment and then went through a red. So we're on Soledad Canyon Road. We're not far from the 14. This is in the Canyon Country area. And uh, at this point in time, uh, they just have a helicopter following along because uh, patrol cars aren't going to be able to keep up uh, with the speeds that this motorcycle has been hitting up to 120, not only on the freeway, uh, but on the surface street. You see they're up maybe close to 130 miles an hour. Excessive speeds on surface streets here. Posted speed limit's probably around 50. And you can see how quickly he can even accelerate uh, past uh, 100 to 140 miles an hour. It's, it's quite amazing. Uh, sometimes the angle of our sky map and our speed tracker will be off a little bit, uh, but the speeds, I don't believe, are up to that 150 mark, but certainly up to 120 miles an hour or even faster. Uh, he's going to have a, uh, a, a clean stretch here with no really traffic volume headed northbound. All of the volume is on the southbound side headed towards Los Angeles. Northbound, as we make our way out of Canyon Country, we head up into Acton. Uh, we're not going to see traffic uh, nearly as much as what we saw earlier when we're down in Canyon Country on Bokeh Canyon on Sierra Highway. Uh, now we're coming up on a cross with a 14 freeway. Be interesting to see if he gets back on the freeway, and it looks like it's declined to get on the 14 freeway southbound. There may be a northbound on-ramp here uh, in just a moment. Uh, but it appears he's going to continue on Soledad Canyon Road. And this is a windy stretch of road, now continuing northbound, basically uh, up into the uh, Aqua Dulce area. And open up just for a moment, Marcel. It gives you an idea what uh, he's looking at here. This is a sweeping stretch of roadway. You can see extremely high rates of speed. There's no patrol cars behind him. And there's not a lot of offs. There are some offs that you could take from here to get into some areas up into the mountains, but there's, there's not a lot of uh, streets that you could take off of Soledad Canyon Road without going into a little residential area where he'd be trapped or going up into a mountainous terrain. So Soledad Canyon Road continues for some time all the way up into Acton. There are some off ramps to get uh, up into the Angeles National Forest. And if you open up again right now, Marcel, you'll see the helicopter, you'll see the CHP helicopter on the left side of your screen. Uh, following along, but no patrol cars. And it'll be interesting to uh, follow the motorcyclists and see just how long it continues on this stretch of Soledad Canyon Road. And when you have someone that's continuing on a, a road like this where not, not a lot of streets to get off on, uh, that's a situation where CHP can really get set with patrol cars up ahead. Uh, whether or not they try a spike strip on a motorcycle, I sincerely doubt it, only because if the, the motorcyclists hit it, especially these rates of speeds, uh, he could be uh, seriously injured or even killed. Um, so at this point in time, they're content to have the helicopter, the CHP helicopter overhead, follow this individual. Uh, right now, we don't see a lot of danger to the public, really for the most part, just to the motorcyclist himself, traveling these high rates of speed. There's a tunnel here, and I'll come back on the other side of this mountain ridge in just a moment. There's little to no traffic on the northbound side. There's some traffic southbound. If he stays in his lane, he's not going to be a threat to uh, any of the, uh, the motorists coming southbound or any of the motorists in the area. So we're into a, a rural area now, out of Canyon Country, really, I think, on the south end of Aqua Dulce, and this will head uh, up into uh, the Acton area if he continues northbound. Uh, but once again, uh, it looks like his speed may have slowed just a bit. CHP helicopter is overhead. 
We're going to continue to monitor this and to follow this. As far as we know, the only thing the individual want is wanted for at this point in time is excessive speed. Now, that can change from time to time. We'll figure something out. Now, here's a turn. If he makes this turn here onto Aquadulce Canyon Road, and it looks like he has, that will wind him back up to the 14. So now this off-ramp has taken him uh, on another little windy road that uh, cuts between this little mountain ridge, and it will end up back on to the 14 freeway. And we'll have to see what action uh, the motorcyclist, his man, uh, suspect takes at that point. There's really no place to go on Aquadulce Canyon Road until you hit the 14, and then you have some choices. If you continue past the 14, you'll head up into Aquadulce. Aquadulce is not a big town at all. It's a, a rather small area. Uh, but a, a situation like this, a pursuit like this, is a little tricky uh, just because uh, you don't put a patrol car in front of this, this individual and try and stop them. If you do, they can get around pretty easy. I don't think the spike strips are really something they're going to... Um, uh, to try and use in a situation like this. We know for certain they've run the plates by now. If the motorcyclist is the registered owner, then they know who this individual is. At some point, if he starts to travel at a high enough rate of speed and dangerous people in the public, they may back off. They may go into surveillance completely and maybe even take the helicopter off and figure we'll get him at a different time. If not, if it comes back stolen, then that would change the scenario and the strategy a, a little bit as well. But we just don't know at this point in time. We haven't got that information from the CHP. All we know the want is on this individual is excessive speed. At this point, you know, we're not far from the 14, so uh, we're going to have a situation where uh, if the uh, suspect would like to get on the 14 and go back south to the area where he is being pursued originally, uh, we, we think this started on the 14 freeway uh, coming southbound, and we'll see in a lot of cases we follow these pursuits and the suspect will head back to an area where they've been before, whether that's an area that they're just familiar with or they live. Uh, it, it's hard to say. We never really uh, are able to uh, determine exactly the thought process, but now we're at the 14 split, and that's the 14 northbound. So I think we're going to see some pretty high speeds on the 14 freeway. It'll be interesting to see what CHP does as far as trying to put a patrol car uh, behind the individual. But look at the acceleration. These motorcycles, the power to weight ratio is amazing, and they can accelerate at such a high rate of speed. You know, depending on the, the uh, CC and the size of the engine in that motorcycle, even going uphill on the 14, you could easily see, uh, see speeds of 140, 150, even 160 miles an hour, uh, depending on the displacement of that bike. And you can see how quickly it flies past the traffic. Traffic northbound here is probably about 70, and it looks like uh, nothing going by. Uh, so there's not a lot of volume on the northbound side. Uh, it looks like it's going to be, for the most part, uh, smooth sailing. I don't see any congestion where... Uh, he's got to worry about really swerving in between uh, tight corners or tight spaces to get around traffic. Uh, it looks fairly open for the most part. And we're on the 14 northbound. We're not far from the Acton area. If it continues northbound, we'd be all the way up in a Palmdale. And there's a great shot with a CHP helicopter right on top of the motorcycle at this point in time. And I still don't see any patrol cars, so they're content right now to surveil uh, this individual from the helicopter from above and not any, put any patrol cars out on the 14 northbound at that high rate of speed. And you can understand that because, you know, putting a, a, a vehicle swerving in and out of traffic, uh, that can really cause uh, more problems and, and more risk for motorists. Now, all of a sudden, he's really slowed down, traveling basically just at the, uh, the flow of traffic at that speed. Uh, but it's been very interesting to watch the demeanor at one point in time. It almost looks like he's trying to slow down and look back to see if he can see any uh, vehicles behind him. Uh, but we've seen uh, a slow pace and then an immediate acceleration. And we'll have to see exactly what happens here. So it looks like we're taking another off-ramp from the 14 freeway onto Escondido Canyon Road. And uh, we're in a very rural area. If he continues on to Escondido Canyon Road and makes a right, we'd be in Acton. If he makes a left, we'll be headed back towards the Aquadulce area. And that looks like a left turn it's going to be. And then, of course, there's an opportunity to get right back on the 14 freeway southbound here. We'll have to see if he takes that path or not. And it looks like that is exactly uh, what he is going to do. So now we're back on the 14 south. There's a little more volume headed southbound this time of the morning. But I don't see any stop traffic until you get all the way down into the canyon country area. And, again, I think we're going to see excessive speeds. And it doesn't wouldn't surprise me. If he turned around on the 14 just to see if there were patrol cars behind him. But losing the helicopter, especially in an area like this, is virtually impossible. 
one thing if there's parking structures to duck into or if there's uh, airspace restrictions. Uh, but on a clear day with a helicopter overhead on the freeway headed southbound, no matter what speed he travels at, he won't be able to get away from the helicopter. We don't know of any incidences yet. We don't know uh, that there is a, an accident that has been caused by uh, this individual's driving. Uh, we only know he's wanted for excessive speed. And uh, we'll continue to follow along here. Once again, we're on the 14th southbound. Uh, we're headed uh, back down into Canyon Country, leaving the uh, Aqua Dulce area. And uh, the speeds right now, uh, all of a sudden you see the acceleration. It, it's been quite remarkable to watch. You know, all of a sudden you'll see them down at 70, and within seconds you'll see them well above 100, 120, 130. Um, the speeds have been, at times, extremely ex excessive. And there was a time when patrol cars were behind them. CHP had the suspect on the 14th South, I believe, in almost the same area. And uh, they basically just couldn't keep up with the patrol cars. They weren't going to travel at 120, 130 in their patrol cars to try and keep up with the motorcycle. Uh, but there's no chance of outrunning the helicopter, um, especially the helicopter can, you know, can cut the motorcycle off. Sometimes when a, a motorcycle can, can do 150, is on a straight road like the 10 freeway out of LA, our helicopters can't keep up. Um, you know, our speeds are really around 125, 130, maybe 140 miles an hour, uh, depending on the wind, if we're into the wind, our ground speed may be less. Uh, a motorcycle that can get up to 150, 160, and some of these can, uh, some of these large displacement motorcycles, they pull away from us. But when you're on a windy stretch of roadway like this, you can sort of take line of sight and you can cut the uh, individual off. So no matter what speed he travels at, uh, the helicopter will be able to stay overhead and keep them in sight. I think we may, are we getting off, uh, or getting back? Now we're getting onto Aqua Dulce Canyon Road and going back northbound. So we've been all over the place. Um, we see him looking around, fidgeting a little bit, possibly looking to see if there's any patrol cars behind him. Uh, but more than likely, this is not going to end well for the motorcyclist. Uh, they're going to continue to track him until they can finally get him. Excuse me? And it does look like the patrol cars have picked him up. So when, when he does say, uh, we, we saw a patrol car off to the right for a moment, I'm not sure how hard they're going to press uh, this individual with the patrol cars. And especially when we get out here into Aqua Dulce and we get uh, you know, next to some of these homes that we may come up on here in a moment, I'm not sure they want to press him and get him to travel at even a higher rate of speed because he sees a patrol car right behind him. Uh, but when you get into an area like this, it's pretty rural. And this has been going on long enough for most of the units in the area, uh, the motor units, to uh, you know, realize what's going on. And then they can set up in certain areas uh, to try and uh, get a grasp on where he is and come up with maybe with a strategy to stop this. But you can tell now we're in Aqua Dulce now. It's sort of a spread out little community. It's not large at all. Um, there are some homes in here. Right now it's headed out more towards an industrial area. Uh, this street right here, uh, if we continue, I think we'll wrap around and have the ability to put them back on maybe Sierra Highway or the 14 Freeway southbound once again. Uh, going away from most of the homes, so that is good. We're coming up on uh, an industrial area. There's some uh, yards here, some truck yards, uh, some businesses up ahead and more or less just a windy road, but it doesn't appear the patrol cars decided to get right behind them and press them. The speeds have slowed down a little bit, and you know, this could go on for some time. It, it certainly could last a long time because they're extremely difficult uh, to stop. When you have a motorcycle like a motorcyclist like this and you're not gonna use a spike strip, um, then trying to stop it is difficult, and a lot of times all they can do is really continue to follow along, and it looks like that's what they're doing now. you still see the patrol cars behind him? Tyler, do you see the patrol cars still behind him at your window? Do you, is that a patrol car there? Are they still following him or are they backed off? All right, but they just backed off. They're not pressing. Okay. okay. Copy, thanks. I believe this runs into Sierra Highway up here, if I'm not mistaken. So if you just joined us, we've had a pursuit going on. I think now probably it started maybe uh, 35, 40 minutes ago. We've been on it maybe for the last 20 to 25 after we picked it up. 
We believe it started on the 14 freeway southbound. It speeds up to 120 miles an hour with CHP patrol units uh, right behind the individual. But once he got down into Canyon Country, uh, got off onto Soledad Canyon uh, down uh, towards Valencia for a moment or two, then turned around, uh, got back on the 14 freeway northbound for a while, was on Soledad Canyon Road, was on Placerita Canyon Road, uh, Bouquet Canyon Road, um, uh, into the Acton area, turned around, went up into Aqua Dulce, and now uh, headed southbound once again. This intersection coming up here, I'm not certain exactly what it is, uh, but Davenport Road, and we're coming up on a street that will put him back down uh, into Canyon Country, and then could, uh, if he makes a left turn, that'll be south, and that could put him back into the Canyon Country area, back towards um, Santa Clarita. So yeah, this is Sierra Highway, and it looks like if he makes a left turn, he'll be headed down back into Canyon Country once again. If he went north, he'd be headed basically up into the Angeles Forest towards, say, Lake Elizabeth. Uh, but now we're headed southbound once again, headed back towards the area where uh, we believe is fairly close to where the pursuit started. Um, there are patrol cars behind him. We can't open up far enough to show you those. They've stayed rather far behind, probably a quarter mile or more. And uh, I believe the helicopter is still overhead, although as I look outside, I've lost them for a moment. And yeah, they are still tracking with the CHP helicopter. Um, I think one of the issues is, is uh, he continues southbound at a high rate of speed. We're going to get back into a very congested area in Canyon Country. We're going to we're going to head back down towards Soledad Canyon Road. Uh, we're on Sierra Highway. You know, fortunately this morning, uh, the 14 southbound and Sierra Highway, which are the two southbound routes that really take you uh, out of the high desert, out of the Palmdale area, and, and get you down into Santa Clarita, and then a lot of folks from there travel into the valley, the San Fernando Valley, into downtown. It's it, not too congested today. Uh, lots of times you see a lot more. Uh, we're in summer, school's out, you see a little, oh boy, look at this, pretty close, uh, into oncoming traffic there. It wasn't that close, but when you see a motorcycle traveling at that rate of speed, and, uh, you know, it's only a couple of feet from oncoming traffic to go around a vehicle, uh, that, that's pretty frightening. Uh, but there's not a lot of volume here, but we're basically now back into canyon country. We're back into some area where there's some homes. We're back into an area where there's going to be a lot of options and routes for the motorcyclists to take uh, different off-ramps and head in different directions. And we're heading down into an area where there'll be a lot more patrol cars, a lot more units surveilling in this area. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, CHP, is basically uh, uh, has the pursuit at this point in time. They're running point on this, if you will. Uh, they may hand it off as we get a little bit further south to the Sheriff's Department. It's hard to say. Uh, but you can tell now, as you open up a little bit, Marcel, just to give you a little perspective on where we're at. So we're on Sierra Highway southbound. We're headed down into Canyon Country. And we go a little further south, we get really right down into the heart of Canyon Country and that Santa Clarita area. We were down here once before, back and forth towards Boque Canyon on Soledad Canyon Road, uh, heading towards Valencia, then turning around. So it's, um, it's familiar territory, if you will, for the suspect. They're sort of swerving around a vehicle into an oncoming lane, but there was no traffic there. And certainly we've seen him slow down just a little bit, but from time to time we've seen, you know, that's not an accurate speed right there. It's just our angle. And I'll tell you when our speeds are accurate, but he's probably doing about 89 miles, miles per hour would be my guess, considering the flow of traffic and, and where he's at. But we have seen speeds legitimately above 120 uh, on the freeway and on uh, Soledad Canyon Road at a time. So we're coming up on a more congested area that always is a concern if he loses control of that bike. I mean, not only for the suspect's safety, but, um, you know, you could easily uh, harm or kill somebody uh, if you cause an accident. Because uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's not that much weight to the motorcycle, um, not that much inertia, basically, because you don't have too much weight. But uh, when you have other vehicles swerving to get out of the way, we've seen a lot of accidents occur that way and people get hurt. So we'll get SkyMap back on. We just took a turn off of uh, Sierra Highway and we're headed back, uh, we're headed up into a residential community, some track homes. Uh, you'll see those pop up here in just a moment. Uh, single lane street. Uh, we'll see if we can get our SkyMap to come back up so I can give you the Strata Street. We're in New Hall now. And uh, through that yield, which is really isn't a big deal following that vehicle. And if we open up a little bit, Marcel, I'll just give the folks an idea where we're at. There's a large, um, a lot of construction going on here, a lot of new housing. Uh, there's a school there, but school's out. So actually it's a park, I believe. And uh, you see the speeds have slowed just a little compared to what we saw earlier. 
uh, but certainly we're headed to, into a residential area and that, that complicates things as well. Were you uh, talking to me, JJ? Uh, I'm hearing that it's the Skyline Ranch community in Newhall. That's the, uh, that's the area, if you're familiar with this area that uh, he's traveling through. And uh, basically right now he's headed uh, almost due west um, towards an area that we had been before. There's a lot of homes in this area. You know, kids are out. It's that time of the morning, right? A little early. But uh, you can see that um, it, it, it could really pose a big risk. You just waved to that guy? No, you tapped his helmet. Oh, so uh, Mar to Marcel told me in his uh, motorcycle etiquette that the guy tapped his helmet to let the guy behind him, that motorcyclist, know that there were patrol cars coming up behind him. So there you go. Um, he, he's giving him a clue. The police are hot on his tail. Um, so we... Um, we're on Skyline Ranch Road. The helicopter's still overhead. It's uh, one of these things they're just going to let play out, though. I, I, I don't see a procedure, a strategy to try and move in and stop this. And we're just going to follow along and, you know, really hope that nobody gets hurt. Hope that uh, he gets off the bike and makes a run for it. Um, more than likely, it's registered to the, uh, the, the individual who's riding it. I only say that because if it wasn't, we probably have some indication that it's stolen. I mean, that's pure speculation, though. It doesn't mean that for certain. But in a lot of cases, that's um, that's what we see. Um, if they did run it and it came back stolen, they may be thinking it's a, a somebody different than uh, the registered owner on the bike. Uh, but uh, certainly they, they, they may presume that at this point in time, but they don't know for certain. And you see him, you know, looking back, trying to see if there are patrol cars behind him. A CHP helicopter is a little tricky. You know, some... Uh, they're being tricky. In some pursuits, they'll get right down on the ground and get right up to the guy. Uh, the CHP is staying behind him far enough. I don't know if we'll see him in the shot. Uh, so that the motorcyclist really can't see him. So the, the motorcyclist at this point in time really doesn't know if he's being followed. And certainly we're high enough and far enough away that he can't see us. And then, of course, when you have a helmet on, your, your vision is really restricted as far as, you know, seeing up and to the side. So there's a really good chance now that he's really slowed here on Plum Canyon Road in the Saugus area uh, that he does not know if the police are behind him. Maybe he thinks um, they, uh, they're not behind him any longer. We're on Bokeh Canyon Road, and this is a place that we were, I would say, about 30 minutes ago in this exact same spot. And now we see uh, some acceleration once again up to some pretty high speeds. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. Once again, we really hope that um, you know, nobody gets hurt. Tyler, do you see the helicopter out your window? CHP is still behind him. Boy, he's a long way away. Interesting. Um, he obviously doesn't want that guy to see him. So there we go. We're seeing some, um, you know, some pretty uh, ab uh, abrupt maneuvers by the motorcycle in and out of traffic here. Um, we're seeing speeds have slowed a bit, waving to someone there. I'm sure it's another motorcyclist on the side there trying to let them know that the police are behind him. Uh, the speeds are still, you know, pretty excessive, 70, 80 miles an hour in an area where more than likely it, it's posted at uh, 45, I would think. So um, we're seeing them swerve and, and try and get through and around some of this traffic. It'll be interesting to see if this continues on until the bike runs out of fuel. They don't consume a lot of fuel, but they don't hold a lot of fuel. Uh, usually like four to five gallons, but they get quite a few miles per gallon, unless you're driving like this. Um, then, of course, depending on the displacement of the motorcycle, the, the bigger displacement of motorcycles really suck up quite a bit more fuel. Um, but I kind of have a feeling that uh, CHP is just content to follow with the helicopter. The helicopter is still following, but we don't even see them in our shot. They're staying far, far enough away so that the, uh, the motorcycles really can't tell if they're there or not. Now, we see some slowing here and turning into a gas station. And, uh, boy, it'll be interesting to see if he tries to get gas... If, go to the other side. If he tries to get gas, it'll be interesting to see if CHP can get a unit in here before he's able to fill that tank. So that's got to be the strategy right now. That's one of the problems you have when you don't have a patrol car right behind him. A suspect may get away with actually pulling into a gas station, 
getting fuel real quick, and then continuing on in the uh, in the pursuit. Now the helicopter's telling the units to get here as quickly as possible. They'd like to stop him before he gets gas, but boy, if he can just get three or four gallons of fuel, he could be on his way once again, and this pursuit could continue on for some time. But this does give us an indication if he starts to pump some gas that he needs fuel, but he may have just been hiding. It may have just been a technique to look to see if there's any patrol cars behind him. And that looks like that's what it was, or he needs fuel and just felt like he didn't have time uh, and the police were uh, right behind him or he didn't have enough time to really stop down and get fuel. So it's kind of hard to tell for sure. We're on Seco Canyon Road. We're in Saugus. He's slowed a bit. And again, the helicopter is still overhead. So it's hard to say exactly what that stop was at the gas station. Um, we are seeing um, running through a red light there. And uh, I don't believe any patrol cars are still right behind him. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Is there a way to kill um, Leslie? Because I hear her. It's a little distracting. It's not the end of the world, but. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, not literally. Yeah, it would appear by what we saw right there, he probably sees us. It looks like he turned his head and directly looked at us. It would be really difficult for him to tell whether we were, were a, uh, at this distance, whether we were a law enforcement helicopter or news media. Uh, but it looks like he slowed a bit. I mean, we're not seeing the, you know, excessive rates of speed that we saw, you know, 30, 40 minutes ago with him doing well over 100 miles an hour on, on uh, surface streets on Soledad Canyon Road and then above 120 miles an hour on the freeway. Right now, it looks like he's just trying to figure out whether or not the police are right behind him, whether patrol cars are gonna be there, whether he can maybe make a run for it. Uh, but if they're gonna continue to follow along, it's gonna be difficult for him to really get away. I mean, nearly impossible. Um, we're headed towards an area now where uh, a suspect could maybe make a run for it, get off the bike and run into an area where it may be hard to uh, take him into custody. But when we're on Soledad Canyon Road and we were headed way up into the Acton area, you know, that sort of changed everything because there's no place to go up there. Obviously, uh, you know, there's a, a much better chance that you could actually get off the bike and make a run for it. Uh, there are no patrol cars behind him. We really saw uh, that indication because uh, when he did pull into the gas station, it looked like he really wasn't thinking about getting gas, or if he was, he was just trying to scope out the territory first and stop to see if he had time. But there were no patrol cars that pulled in right behind him. Now, uh, open up for me because I don't have him out the window. It looks like he's pulling into a residential area. Two cop cars right behind him, and it looks like he's made the right decision, and he's going to give himself up. So it was quite the pursuit. It was uh, ongoing for, I think, about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, it was uh, ongoing extremely high rates of speed. You could tell the motorcyclist is now getting off his bike. He's obeying the commands of the officers to lay face down. They should move in and take him into custody here in a moment. Uh, so as far as we know, no one was injured. Uh, certainly this played out without anybody being hurt. That is good news. And uh, the officers are still taking their time before they move in. They may want him to uh, open his arms up a little bit. They may want him to move a little bit, maybe pull up his shirt make sure that he might not have a weapon. They also have a cane on there now, just in case he tries to make a run for it. So uh, more than likely, they want to let him know that the dog is there because that's frightening uh, to a suspect if they know that the dog is there and might uh, be let go on them if they don't comply. Uh, but CHP officers more than likely going to slowly move in, guns drawn, already have his hands behind his back. They'll cuff him very quickly, and this is all over here in Saga. So it was quite the pursuit, went on for some time, but now the suspect is in custody, and as far as we know, no one's been hurt. So as far as that's concerned, good news.
All right, copy. I wonder if he's running out of gas. Yeah, I'm kind of a feeling it might have been as well. <laughs> yeah, that could have been it. 